Yo, what's up? This is Jay Dennis with the Jay Dennis Podcast for Tuesday, December 18th, 2018. (laughs) I haven't recorded Jack since last week. I've been... I've been busy. Um, You know, I run my own entrepreneurial business with an amazing Fortune 1 company. Fortune 100 company behind it to back it up with resources. But it's my own business, man. I'm all commission. Trying to end off the year right. End it strong. And I've exceeded... I've exceeded my goals, man. Like, life is really damn good. And it's, you know, it's Christmas time, 2018, and it just it just occurred to me that there's like this weird pattern where like every 4 years I go through like a really good era. <laughs> so it's 2018, life is way better than it's been in a while as of late, and it's only going to keep getting better, so Christmas 2018, things start turning around, I start making money, da 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 and I I think, wow, you know, the last time I, one of the last times I remember being, like, feeling like this much bliss, and, like, little, little to no friction was, like, Christmas of 2010, but then I also was talking with my wife, about the first Christmas we spent together back in 2014 when we started dating. And I was like, huh, 2010, 2014, 2018. Every four years, I'm killing it. (laughs) It's not annually. (laughs) It's just every four years. (laughs) Sorry, getting over a cough. Every four years. And then I think, okay, you know, I, I, there's there's some goodness every year, but you know when you're in your twenties and you're trying to get out of college and you're dealing with some stuff, you know the 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 the, the, the bliss might be a little harder to come by unless you create it yourself. And I'm of the mindset now that I don't have to wait another four years to have an amazing era. But historically, 2018, 2014, 2010, and then I look back to tw- 2006. Okay, what was happening then? 2006, I believe that was the year that that winter, I think I went to South Carolina and tried to ski. I tried to ski. And um, this person, come on, come on, come on, man. I tried to ski. I was listening to Kill Switch Engage. I was listening to Korn's See You on the Other Side album. And, uh, yeah, it was a good time. It was, uh... It it fits the whole every four years is pretty awesome deal. Sophomore year of high school, one of the, uh... Wasn't my best year, but... For the most part, that was kind of one of my more uh, drama-free years. So, okay, every four years, alright, so let's take it back another four years. We go to, uh, 2002. Um, let's see, in 2002 I was... 11 years old, and let me see, oh, let me, let me think, let me, let me have a think about that one. Oh, God. All right. So that was fifth grade going into sixth grade, but then around that time, I was transitioning out of Orlando and moving to Claremont. So um, in terms of sixth grade middle school, that part, I, ugh, that was one of the worst years in terms of school, like, I was just an annoying little kid, you know, I'm not, I'm not here on my own podcast to crap on myself, but, you know, because a lot of us as kids were annoyed, annoying, and hated on some level, I mean, I wasn't a pariah, I had friends, but a lot of Sonic, a lot of Sonic the Hedgehog going on, I think, I think that was the year, was that the year I got a GameCube, got a GameCube, I got Sonic Adventure, I got uh, Super Smash Brothers Melee, And then we ended up moving to Claremont. Was it? I feel like that was more fifth grade dominated. Anyway, so from 2002, we go to 1998. (gasps) Oh my God, we're back in the 90s. Um, And if you don't get the whole 1998 reference, then I'm 
making. It's from Resident Evil 4. Basically, as soon as you start the story, you just hear like that sad music, the flashback music, the wah, wah. and then Leon, already out of breath, is going, ah, 1998. So, there you go. You have the context for that. Um, I don't remember. I just remember, I remember the house I lived in. I remember kind of what was going on. I remember that my eyesight was a little bit differently because everything looked different back in the 90s. Things looked more colorful. They looked more lo-fi. You know, a little photography, little photography term there for you. And uh, from there, 1994, uh, I was three. So maybe I, I, I vaguely remember the house I lived in. I remembered a couple of other things. Uh, I do remember one Christmas, kind of, and I remember throwing up after drinking too much pickle juice, and then, uh, so from 1994, we're down to 1990, I no longer exist, uh, well, around Christmas time, I was, uh, I was, uh, I was in utero, all right, so let's, what, what, what was going on while I was in utero, so Nirvana, still dealing with the, uh, massive success of Bleach, hadn't even put out Nevermind yet, and, and uh, that, that, that year, fucking uh, Metallica's Black Album. Was it Black Album or was it Megadeth's uh, Rust in Peace album? I did a podcast about this a couple months ago where I was like, oh yeah, what are some of my favorite thrash albums and metal albums that came out in 91 versus 90? Where I was like, crap, this album was one year away from coming out on my birth year. Anyway, my name is Jay Dennis. I just took you down memory lane for a little bit there. Hope you enjoyed that. Um... I'm still, you know, podcasting consistently, doing it every Tuesday. Um, haven't been as long as I've wanted them to be the past week and now, but life is going really well. Um, been fighting off a, a sickness, like I beat the crap out of it and it, it goes away like 98%, but then I engage in some debauchery or some fitness or something and it comes back. And then I have to hit it with the old medical cocktail again of acetaminophen, a couple of fisherman tablets, a vitamin C pill, um, a multivitamin, some orange juice, and maybe some some uh, flash pasteurized apple juice from Trader Joe's. And I was like, why don't they just call it flasherized? You know, that would be uh, <laughs> that would be a cooler word. Um, I'm also done. I am done. Uh, in the restaurant game, I finished my temporary part-time job last Saturday, left on really good terms, left a nice little, left a light, nice little note for my peeps, um, there have been places that I've worked at for, like, longer, where I just kind of faded away and, like, left with, like, hardly any legacy, but, like, some of these other places I've worked at, mainly restaurants, where I'm not there as long, but because I'm working with a good team and I myself am a good team player, I don't have to work there forever to like leave an impression. So like I'm satisfied that I, I can go back there as a patron now and actually sit at the bar, enjoy the, the good shit. And um, this particular bar is one of the more well-known places in my town. And um, the brewmasters brew all, the, all their own beer there. So like there's no like Bud Light or Heineken or um, shock top or anything. It's all their own beer and it's fantastic. Um, beyond that, I have started to see some, uh, drafts for the new Raptor Riot single, uh, in terms of the artwork for the single. I, I've seen a couple of drafts and, uh, I gave some notes and I gave some, uh, appreciation. Should be seeing more, uh, tomorrow or whatever, maybe on the next podcast, you guys will get more of a, an update, but there's only so many days left in the month, I said I was going to release something at the end of this month, so, uh, go to raptorriot.bandcamp.com, download the Sabotage DP, make sure you follow me on Instagram, jdennis2018, I'm starting to do consistent Instagram stories, so that you guys know what the fudge I'm up to, and, um, yeah, like, again, life is a lot better now. And uh, anybody that says the money can't buy happiness, uh, usually they're broke. So uh, until the next clip.
Oh, and quick correction. I kept saying that I was skiing in North Carolina. I was snowboarding. I have never skied once. I am a snowboarder! You enjoy that teaser? That's right. You'll be getting more of that later this month. End of 2018. This is Jay Dennis, Jay Dennis Podcast. Still Tuesday. Doing this whole dang thing this week on this day. Didn't do any clips throughout the past week to uh, throw together into this amalgam of a podcast, which I use to articulate my thoughts that a lot of people I know and love, the best people, the best people, or just regular people that I just meet on the streets or at networking events or whatever, they can't wrap their head, their heads, they can't wrap their heads around a lot of what I talk about because a lot of what I talk about, a lot of what I believe, and a lot of what I apply is not average, it's not normal. It's weird, it's different, but it's powerful. And that's why I am rising and will continue to rise to where I want to be at a much higher level. I've been starting this since I was like at least 20, maybe 18, but it's only been a lot more as of recently. Things have been falling into place actions that I've taken, plans that I've put into place and laid out. Things are starting to come together. I'm podcasting while I'm walking around my house right now. And um, so if you hear some noise in the background, it's because I'm multitasking, okay? I do believe that if you multitask, something suffers. But, you know, it's Tuesday night. I meant to post this earlier in the day. I will post it today. You know, stay dedicated to my Tuesday podcast date, many of which some of you will get on a Wednesday morning, especially if you're on the East Coast where my my family's from, old friends too. Um, But I just, I just want to relax, man. I just want to relax. So sometimes it is easier to kind of pile things together, but I'm doing things that are meaningful, okay? I'm not outside mowing the yard. I'm not outside doing loud stuff. I'm not bathing my dog with running bath water. You might just hear a little bit of shifting around as I kind of clean up a little bit and move things around and organize because my house is generally clean, but I've got family coming up this weekend and I like my house to be, you know, spick and span. And I do it because I want to. This isn't one of those sitcoms or one of these rom-coms where, you know, I'm the stupid husband or stupid newlywed that's like, oh, the the in-laws are coming. Oh, God. What if they don't think my house is clean? They're going to, they're going to judge. And it's like, nope. I married into a family that does not have crazy in-laws. And also, I have high enough self-esteem to where I don't have to put that much weight onto that kind of stuff. So, boo on that. Who knows if that was a Hollywood-created stereotype, but I know that in-law, in-law problems are a thing, but fortunately, I don't have that problem. So, the point of this podcast, just in general, just aside from telling you what I've got going on and everything, you know, the Jay Dennis podcast, I'm telling you what is up with me in my world, in my life. is to just simply empower you, man. Like, I really hope this thing hasn't paused. I feel like I've been talking for more than four minutes on this clip. I really hope this thing hasn't cut in and out. Anyway, the point of this is to empower you, man, or girl. It's to make you look at yourself and go like, you know what? A lot of these BS ideas that have been presented to me from weak friend circles or family or society or whatever... 
A lot of it's not true. A lot of it's BS. A lot of people are walking around with their tails between their legs. Broke, poor, miserable, uneducated. Or to people that want to take it a step further, and they do try to better themselves, all they do is consume content and knowledge, but they never apply it. And that's what I've been working on. Because I've been consuming all this content and knowledge, mentorship, betterment, everything of the sort. But I don't want to be a hypocrite and not lead by example. So, I'm just sharing with you some of my experiences and letting you know that it is completely okay. In fact, it's encouraged to think against the grain. I used to work for a company that was very much against having facial hair. Now I can do it whenever the hell I want to. I used to have to ask a boss if I could leave early. Nope, I can do that whenever I want to. It's, 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 it's mind-blowing, the amount of freedom I have. And it's only going to get better as I continue to pay off my debt and become more financially independent. Not just from my parents, which I pretty much am at the ripe young age of 27, but also from creditors. I own my car. No more car payments ever. I don't worry about credit scores because I'm never going to borrow money again. It's the only reason why you need a damn credit score. It's because you're going to borrow money. You're going to take out a loan. I ain't about that. Fuck that. Have I talked about this in a past podcast, uh, in a recent podcast about how different I am and just kind of just basically putting my dick on the table and saying, look at it. Look at how different I am. Why everything I'm doing is different and not just to be cliche. It's because I love it and it's authentic. What inspired me to start this clip? Oh yeah, it's people saying sorry all the time. Weak ass word that gets overused, okay? There have been a couple instances in my life the past couple days where people that were in no position to use the word sorry kept using it. And it happened so consistently that I pegged it as a trend and just basically said, you know what? This isn't just a couple of people. This is just a societal issue where if somebody needs to get around somebody, instead of saying, oh, excuse me, or pardon me, they go like, oh, sorry, sorry. Like... I'm in a hallway, right? I'm talking with some friends. But we're each leaning on the opposite doors or opposite walls of the hallway. So as to leave room for people to walk through. Hercules, get out of there. So me and my friends and my wife are leaning against opposite walls of the hallway. And just talking to each other, you know, across the hall. You know, it's probably about five feet. The the hall's probably about five feet wide. So we're able to talk to each other. But we're leaving room for people to walk to walk through. Every person that walked through, I counted like twelve people. Every person that walked through, oh, sorry. Even though we are zero percent in the way, and they are zero percent causing any kind of like needing to like walk around us or like have us move out of the way. We're already out of the way. But these people that are just walking through are like, oh, sorry. It's like, just walk through. And if you feel like you're a hindrance, say excuse me. The same thing happened today as well. You know, I'm sitting at some event and I realize I'm kind of in an awkward space. So I kind of move my seat over a little bit so people can kind of cut through. I leave enough room for people to kind of just cut through so they can, I cannot be in their way. And every person that can kind of just walk through, oh, sorry, oh, sorry. I'm just like, this is 0% affecting me in a negative way. If you had to say anything, just say like, oh, pardon me, just in case my hips hit you in the shoulder or something. So all this to say, 
I appreciate you listening to my podcast. I want you to come out of this feeling a little more empowered, less disempowered. We've got a bunch of weak people walking around the United States, and I'm tired of it. And this isn't even coming from like a political standpoint. This is just like general weakness, men and women. It's irritating. And all I want to do is share what I can, my perspective and my mindset changes to kind of maybe open your eyes, your, your mind's third eye, if you will. Because I don't want to see people fail. I want to see people succeed. And in order for me to be successful, I'm not going to tear people down to pull myself up past them. I'm going to help people up and become stronger so that I can therefore pull myself up higher with support behind me. Thank you for listening. Hey, it's Jay Dennis again, the podcast. Listening to System of a Down, Steal This Album, quintessential Christmas music right here. There's a odd duality about me where since the age of 18 or whatever, 20, a lot of my young adult life consistently been striving to grow and to be better and of course move on from stuff that I've carried that I've carried with me from either childhood or early adulthood like friendships falling out and everything and I like to think that on a deep level in terms of forgiveness closure what have you I've moved on and I've forgiven and I've apologized where it was due Although I've become a little bit more liberal with the apologies because it's like, you know what, even if I wasn't the main antagonist in these some of these particular instances, wherever I did screw up, I surrender some, you know, apologies or guilt or whatever you want to call it. The duality is <clears throat> deep down I've moved on, I'm good. But when I hear music like this, of course I still think about hanging out with my best friend in high school, starting our first band, you know, our first band back when I was like 14 at the height of System of the Downs, like hypnotized, mesmerized era. I was a freshman in high school, obsessed with System of a Down, so with my buddy, started a band. The band was very much influenced by System of a Down and whatever else, and that's why Raptor Riot ultimately came back full circle to new metal. It wasn't, you know, just because me and my best friend started off new metal and I, I had to get back to it. It just occurred to me how, how, how core and how important the genre of new metal was to me growing up, even before I started the band, like back when I was like nine and ten years old and the turn of the century was happening and like Linkin Park and Limp Bizkit and everything was happening. So like, so all that to say, I've moved on from like the toxic stuff, but I can still listen to this kind of music and like appreciate those times. And if I ever saw certain people again, I, I definitely know that we could, you know, shoot the breeze and kind of like reminisce and stuff. And there's many schools of thoughts that would suggest, oh, is that a is that an unhealthy habit or an unhealthy coping mechanism that you, you, you fantasize about the good times of your life? You fantasize about the 90s, blah, 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 blah. So I'm like, no. No. <clears throat> they play a pivotal part of my life, and they were part of who I was growing up, and it's still part of who I am today. So to give appreciation and to you know show gratitude and take away good stuff from things that may have ultimately ended badly. I think that that's a, that's a powerful thing. Now, I'm in the here and now, and I'm always trying to adopt new art, new ideas, new traditions. But as untraditional as I am, there are things that I do pretty much annually. Like, there are things that I kind of fall back into year after year, where they're not really... They're not bad habits, or they're not, like traps or anything, but they're just like, oh yeah, around Christmas time every year I, I tend to listen to System of a Down more often. 
Um, so, the last clip I, I did ended on kind of a serious note, and kind of want to end this podcast more on a uh, even keeled note because that's 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 what I feel for me is right and then you the listener can interpret it any which way but I was talking about all these ways that I'm different and what I've been doing to like make my business and everything in life better but a couple days ago when I got home from my last night at my uh, restaurant that I was working at temporarily You know, I'm tired, I'm worn out physically. It was probably one of the busiest days I'd ever worked there. It was the busiest day. But I was like, you know what? I don't have to, I don't have to wake up early on Sunday. I'm going to watch a movie for a change, you know? Sometimes on weekends I'll still go to sleep watching TV or Netflix, but I've long since, like, annihilated that habit that I had for years. I don't do that anymore on, like, weeknights and nights where I know that I'm going to wake up at 4 o'clock the next morning. I don't go to bed with electronics, you know, with bright screens on my face or anything like that. Like, none of that. Sometimes I'll go to bed completely quiet, completely dark, but a lot of nights I still fall asleep listening to music. But I I pick the music in advance. I turn my screen brightness all the way down so that, God forbid, I do have to look at my phone in the dark. It's for a second and it doesn't do anything. I'm not on social media doing a bunch of other nonsense um, anyway, the movie I was watching was called The Founder. And, you know, it stars Michael Keaton. It's got uh, Ron Hofferman. Nick Hofferman, sorry. His name's Ron in Parks and Rec. <laughs> Nick Hofferman. And, um, damn, that movie is fantastic. I do not like McDonald's. I'm not a fan of them. I don't like big corporate giants that own massive plots of land and real estate and are basically, like, com- contributing most of like the environmental damage to our world so that they can have a sick fourth quarter profit but just seeing the story of just persistence and like I don't strive to be like this overly hungry guy that just can't get enough and if I was I would do it on a more ethical level as I've already demonstrated but the the, the whole movie you know it starts about this guy who's just like this the sales guy and you know, technically I work in sales and the big takeaway was just persistence and resilience and, you know, it takes place back in like the 1950s. So this guy's listening to like audio tapes or records that probably existed back then where all that self-help stuff was still a thing, but they're like, there are people that have genius that don't utilize it. There are people that have educations and degrees that don't utilize it. There are people that are talented that don't utilize it. All that stuff can help you, but none of it matters is if you don't have resilience and you don't have persistence. So my biggest takeaway, not just from the movie, the movie being great, you know, the casting was great, even though I don't want to ever be a guy like uh, Roy, whatever his name is, the guy who basically founded McDonald's. He didn't start McDonald's, the McDonald's brothers did, but he basically took the whole idea about franchising and turning it into a real estate company and all that crap and basically screwed the brothers out of their money that's the side I don't want to be on but just the whole persistence and resilience side you know I don't want to be overly engaged in like information overload or analysis paralysis where I'm just taking in all this knowledge and all this these ideas but I'm not applying them so every day I'm out with a commitment to talk to a certain amount of people every day no matter how I'm feeling unless I'm like bedridden ill but fortunately with my with my career I have many means of being able to talk to people so I don't have to go out and get dressed and knock on doors I can make calls from home I can text I can email so either way um, but if there's anything you can take away from this podcast it's just the founder is on Netflix I think it's a great movie anybody can really appreciate it But I think if you're trying to better yourself and you take the good part of the lesson from the movie 
it, it's uh, I was wide awake the entire time like I was really enjoying it it's a really great movie um, and I take, I, I take that with me no matter how many times I get told no and uh, how things might look in the uh, short term occasionally I know what my long term vision is I know what my more long term goals are I got them broken down by months by quarter by week by day by year and the biggest thing I can do to achieve those is to be consistent, persistent, relentless, just like a sick system of a down riff.